Hey, it's me. Yeah. Oh, hi. Good evening. This is us. Hi, good evening. It's me again. I don't know what happened just now because it is the Sea Belit show. And today, to sorry, tonight is really Sea Belit. So my camera crew a bit blur just now. Ah, huh? so it's okay. So if you don't know, G twenty twenty is almost coming to an end. Today is the last day of campaigning. Ah, huh? tomorrow will be cooling off day, and Friday will be polling day, lah. Okay. That means, if I you all repeat the thing, yeah, tonight is our last Sibylid show, so at least for now, lah, huh? you know, quite sad, lah. If you also sad, give me some sad react, okay? If not, I also sad. But don't worry, on the night of polling day, we'll be back with a full live program to keep you updated, you know? But, so you stay tuned, lah. Huh? So let's start with our show proper. Yesterday, we talked about PSP's Vladimir Mas SMC candidate, Kumar Apavu's no show at the constituency political broadcast. Today, there's another piece of news on him. Well, recently photos have surfaced online showing pamphlets of uh, depicting Kuma campaigning under the PSP shortly before nomination day. So it's a bit confusing. So you can read the article on our platform for the full story, okay? Uh, what's the views? Uh? Wow, 399 only. Can you all tune in? Uh? Last show already, you all still don't give support on now. Yeah. Okay, uh, where am I? Okay, in other news, Workers' Party's uh, Terence Stan uploaded photos of his visit to Pulau Ubin last night. You might be wondering, why is he doing there? Well, that's because Pulau Ubin is part of East Coast GRC. And yes, WP's Terence Tan is part of the WP's team contesting for East Coast GRC. So, what do the residents of Pulau Ubin think uh, about these elections? Uh, so we also kept up, we also went to, uh, we also took the ferry over there to, to find out. Even as election fever seizes the mainland during a general election, the heat hardly ever reaches the shores of Pula Ubin. For most Singaporeans, attending a mass rally is an essential activity, and travelling to polling stations is usually a 5 to 10 minute affair. But for residents of Pula Ubin, these are, quite literally, more distant experiences for them. Draw 哪一個桶來這裡噹了去就好方便了了。Rasanya Jumpa-jumpa Atakan kat, kat Facebook ha, Dia ada isu warung cakap apa semua kan ha, Situ aje lah ha, Aku dia bahasakan Melayu tu faham lah Kalau bahasa orang putih Tak apa bodoh je tak tahu Dan saya semua ada sampan sendiri Tahun-tahun taruh enjin Begini je Dia tengok wayang ke apa ke Kat Canggi yang ada pakai dayung ha, Yang ada pakai enjin Dayung tak jauh apa 15 minit tak sampai dah sampai Projek bagi tengok wayang Malam ke 10 balik Makan Lagi di sini tak ada apa-apa Canggi tu lah Dia yang buat 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 semua semua tinggal Singapura yang ada bedu yang ada terminis jadi tak di sini jadi tak boleh lah. Ah, uh, 以前呢，王鼎昌总统在选总统啊，我们是在这边选的，很多年了啦，我忘记了几碰几几年了，啊、uh, ，在这边投票的，我们这边聚在一起看电视，看有没有中，反对党有没有中，执政党有没有中，这样咯，不管反对党赢还是 B A B 赢也是没有差别。Yeah, I saw a lot of comments uh, uh, saying, well, you're playing with fire, uh, very close, uh, must end before midnight. Yeah, so that's why I'm speaking so fast today. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm rapping. 
Moving on into this constituency political broadcast, we have candidates from Tampines, Tanya Paga GRC, West Coast GRC, Yo Chika SMC and Yu Hua SMC. So as you all know, the contest at West Coast GRC between Tan Cheng Pok's PSP team and S Iswaran PAP team is closely watched. So here's a snippet of what they said just now. Dear voters of West Coast GRC, we are your People's Action Party candidates and we ask for your vote in the general elections. COVID-19 is the gravest challenge in our history. It has profoundly affected our lives and severely disrupted our jobs. And we know that many of you are worried about your lives and your livelihoods. We understand and share your concerns and have specific plans, both national and local, to help you and your families. For seniors like Mr. Lo, who is in his 70s, he and his four siblings have lived in West Coast all their lives. The Pioneer and Merdeka Generation programs help significantly with their medical costs. The EASE program has made his HDB home barrier free, and he is looking forward to the lifts at the pedestrian overhead bridges, which will make it easier for seniors like him to cross the AYE. For small business owners like Mr. Zairudin, who runs the popular Misoto stall at 726 Market. Business has been affected by COVID-19 and he greatly appreciates the five-month rental waiver from NEA. Our town council has reduced SNC charges for him by 15% for four months. And he plans to adopt the SGQR code digital payment system. But most of all, we want to create jobs for Singaporeans. I serve on the National Jobs Council, and our aim is to create 100,000 jobs and training opportunities for mid-careers and fresh graduates. We complement that with jobs at West Coast, our local initiative to bring job opportunities and career advice to your doorstep at every community centre from Teluk Blanga to Nanyang. Dear voters of West Coast GRC, I'm Dr. Tan Cheng Bok from the Progress Singapore Party. We live in unprecedented times. The COVID-19 pandemic is raging and we need to recover all together. We must now adapt to new ways of working and living, new solutions. We need to think out of the box, not more of the same top-down approach practiced by the PAP. Where the government tells you what to do, and expects you to follow without questioning. Instead, we can rekindle the West Coast spirit where solutions come from ground up. This is what happened when I was an MP 26 years ago. I Raja was a sleepy town when I took over in 1980. The residents of I Raja and I made many changes together. We built a community with a soul with facilities like the first barrier-free community centre for able and disabled. We also pioneered a special daycare centre for the young and old to bond together. The community spirit then was very strong and we will draw on this community spirit to help each other through these tough times. Now, I'm back home in West Coast. I bring with me my experience as a past chairman of the Jurong East Town Council as well as Southwest CDC. Alright, shout out to Aido Jane and uh, Ashley Tan, my two biggest friends. Uh, funnily, uh, Aido Jane um, is watching this live for the first time, right? And I think people are asking me whether I'm drinking Liang Te. You know what? That's why I said already, no sponsors, then I cannot drink anymore, you know, right? Uh, what am I supposed to say? Uh? What else? Uh? Oh, someone asked whether whose head is shinier, mine or Taman's. Of course, Taman's like he senior minister. Eh? Okay, so moving on to the show. Eh? So, you know, this year's polling will be slightly different uh, because of COVID. So, if you're wondering how polling day will be like, um, I guess it's a step by step video. Lah. Okay, please take a look.
Oh, start already. Sorry, sorry. They never kill me. Last show also want to sabo me. Uh, so they asked me to speak formally, yeah, because this is an advisory. Okay, the Singapore Police Force has also sorry. The Singapore Police Force has also released an advisory for polling day. Here are six things to take note. Number one, take public transport or walk to the polling stations where possible, because parking will not be allowed within the premise of polling stations. There will be special drop-off points for vehicles conveying the elderly or persons with physical disabilities. Bags and other belongings brought into the polling stations will be subjected to security checks. The police advises voters not to bring sharp objects, flammable liquids or gas, bulky items and big bags. Chua, why you why you all go vote? You want to bring sharp objects? Just bring pen, can you? Yeah. Oh, so sorry, they got the self-inking pen also. Um, carry on. Voters should leave the polling station after casting their votes. Loitering in the vicinity is not advisable as well. Um, no parking is allowed along the roads near the polling stations. Vehicles found parking indiscriminately or causing obstruction will be towed away. Towed away, ah, uh. it's not salmon. It's towed away, ah. Uh. Uh, where am I, uh? Safety measures will. Hey, you all must. Paste the properly, I cannot see, you know. Wait, uh. Safety measures will be put in place, including temperature screening of all voters at the start of the queue, wearing of masks by voters, safe distancing at all times, and the enforcement of stringent hygiene practices at polling stations. Alright. Moving on, uh. um, So, if you have been... Following the C Village show, we've been showing a lot of thumbs up men. So remember he said that a handshake, sorry, a handshake is a promise, a commitment, a tall order. Hmm. Have you ever wondered what he means? So we asked the man himself. Uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. Good evening, you know. Is it good? Is your day good? <laughs> good! Thumbs up, man! Uh, I guess it's got to do with the internet. You know, Facebook, internet, all this, they always have the up uh, for good and then down for the no good. And then they also have all the emoji kind of thing, right? So it's only two, uh, it's either up or down. <laughs> but of course, you know, in today's society, everybody don't like to be uh, thumbs down. So we got to turn up. <laughs> and instead of looking at the downside, we always look at the positive side, the upside. Don't look at the downside because when you look at the downside every time, you actually end up going down. So you must always look at the upside. This is what you call positive mindset, which a lot of executives also learn from it. Yeah. A handshake is basically a promise, a commitment, a tall order, means I must meet that tall order and it's for you. And it's for you in sense that three fingers also pointing me, it's also for me. It's for us. And if the result is good, thumbs up, man. If the result is lousy, what happened? Boo! Boo to PAP! Oh, okay. So basically, because you see, in our uh, duty, whenever we do groundwork, we always shake hands with people, greet people, good morning, good afternoon, that kind of stuff. So what happened was, when the CPF uh, minimum sum scheme was actually being delayed, and it is a real situation that caused a lot of concern for residents. But it doesn't cause concern me, because for me, I'm not affected by the CPF minimum sum scheme, because I have different financial planning. So when they uh, share with uh, us this view, I realised that we make a promise, that is our little finger, we, when we were young, we always say Go, go, so zi. we make a promise, keep a promise ah. And then, we also need to have a commitment, where we have our wedding ring, right? That's everybody's wedding ring, if they're married of course, you know? So we need to co make a commitment. And in our wedding vows, in good times or bad times, we need to do it well. That's where we have our tallest finger. Our tallest finger is the tall order. It is a tall order that we have to fulfill. Imagine good times or bad times, we still got to stick together and learn how to help each other in our marriage, in our family. 
and therefore it is for us, all of us, as one family. So it's for you, and it's also for us, and everything works out. Thumbs up, man! <laughs> and of course, there are bad times, but we must always continue to strive for the good times. That's what our purpose. So we oppose or we give alternative voice not for the sake of opposing, for the sake of opposing. We just want to make things better for everybody. I don't know why, uh, every night, uh, every night, someone will ask me, is it live, live? I show you, the, I show you my, my handphone. Uh. Live or not? Ah, ah, live, uh. okay, uh. yeah. Um, so, don't know, leh. got anything to ask me or not? I mean, yeah, it's cooling off day very soon, uh, so we can't really publish anything and talk anymore. So if you have any questions to ask me, please feel free. Oh, but then let me, if you have no questions, right, I'll let, I'll let you think, right, I'll let you think. So um, let me sell some Koyo first. Uh. So the polling day show will be, will be quite solid, uh, I think, uh, I don't know. Uh. Maybe depending whether I'm there or not. Uh. So thumbs up if you want me to be there. See this thumbs up, man, okay? Uh, so it will be a longer show, I think, because we'll watch the results with you. Uh, so it's like a watch party with friends la, uh, um, and it's a different set. Uh, I think it's more like a living room of sorts rather than a bedroom. So just as someone said, my house is very nice. Yeah, my house is very nice, also very big. Uh, because this is my office. Uh. I've been staying here for like, what, 14 days really. So yeah, okay, lo, just like that. La. And um, what am I supposed to say? Uh? Oh yeah, any suggestions for the show, what you want to see? What kind of set do you want to see? Uh, just leave it in the comments. Lah. Um, what else uh, can I say? Uh? Um, if there's nothing much to say, I want to take this opportunity to thank my, my, my colleagues. Uh. You wait, uh, I take the camera. Uh. Uh. This one, the, the, the people... Hey, don't anyhow shoot my crotch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Let's start from here, ah. my camera crew, hey, Shukri, hey, Shaka, James, you can see, ah, can see. Ah. Cannot move around, huh? can. Yeah. This is uh, Kane, Lauren, Adrian, please, hello. I got stuck here, I cannot see you. Yes, Adrian, and uh, Adrian and then April. So yeah, this is my very talented crew. Uh, We've been doing this live for how many days already? Yeah? I don't know la. Eight days la, huh? Let me take it. Uh, what you want to see? You want? Let me know. But I think nothing to see already lah. I've been talking so much cock already. Yeah. So I go back. So you be shaky yeah? like Blair Witch huh? What's the, what's the thumbs up for? Oh, so, oh, sorry. So, you know, I'm buying time lah, because I got one more video to export. It take very long to export lah. So, you all please uh, watch the video now, okay? Go watch. Quick. Imagine you are the head of a company, a company called Singapore, a company with 5.6 million employees. And every five years or so, there are applicants applying to help run your company. Well, on your desk are four resumes from four of the most prominent applicants, PAP, WP, SDP, and PSP. I hear they have lots of ideas on how to manage your people. The resumes are really, really long, and you can only choose one of them. So let's narrow it down to four key issues as we revise each resume. The issues are COVID-19, jobs, their plans for the middle class, and support for the elderly. Let us begin with the PAP. Since COVID-19 is not going away anytime soon, it's important to see what plans they have. The PAP wants to ramp up COVID-19 testing and tracing capabilities and invest in R&D for treatments and vaccines. They highlighted the free inpatient COVID-19 treatment at hospitals and also the allocation of $20 billion to the Ministry of Health in the recent budgets. On migrant workers, PAP promises to complete health clearance, enabling them to return safely to work and build additional housing with improved standards. To mitigate the economic fallout, PAP introduced several schemes such as the Job Support Scheme, Self-Employed Person Income Scheme, the Temporary Relief Scheme and the COVID-19 Support Grant. They also promised to create 
generate 100,000 new job opportunities under the SG United Jobs and Skills Program. Moving on to WP, they plan on tackling the crisis by making vaccinations free to all residents, expanding testings to include asymptomatic people and aid foreign workers by creating a dedicated statutory board to set and enforce standards of work and living conditions. WP aims at staying transparent throughout the crisis with your people, forming an independent medical advisory board that enables public and private recommendations to the government's medical team, channel financial support through a stored value account for each citizen that is viewable by anyone to see the amount of help received, make any potential finding public for anyone's input, and make trace together code and open source, gathering only necessary data for contact tracing. WP also has plans for the economy, to forgive HDB rent, to set repayment of government loans only when businesses are back to profitability, invest in workers and companies to reduce reliance on reserves, as well as several other schemes. Next up is SDP. The SDP has yet to unveil their plans on handling the COVID-19 pandemic. Same goes to the BSP, as at the moment, they have yet to present any specifics besides their intention to have bolder economic stimuli and stronger support for SMEs. Now we move on to one word we've been hearing a lot recently, jobs. On jobs, the PAP has many plans for your working people. For the older folks, they offer programs and credits that are designed to help them at work or even find new employment. while the younger folks also have opportunities for training locally and even overseas. There is also support for workers with disabilities and lower wage workers. On the subject of jobs, WP aims to build a dynamic local workforce. Some policies they're proposing include a national minimum wage of $1,300 to abolish the retirement age so anyone can work as long as they're able to and to address the gender wage gap. There will be a requirement for employers with 10 or more employees to report to MOM. When it comes to jobs, SDP's policy stance has always been to ensure that employers employ Singaporeans first. Their campaign for this election emphasizes that benefits be paid to workers retrenched due to COVID-19 under the SDP Restart Program. The PSP's focus on jobs revolves around having stronger support for SMEs. This includes prioritizing jobs for Singaporeans, introduce quota for employment pass, lower quota for S-pass and work permit, and review free trade agreements like CECA. Moving on to the plans for the middle class, the PAP are suggesting an increase in GST from 7 to 9% to fund healthcare for the elderly. They plan to expand the healthcare system and will offer payouts to offset this increase. Besides that, they are proposing financial support through subsidies and grants for things like housing, education, transport, and healthcare. Also, the PAP wants to raise awareness and promote inclusivity of children with special education needs, opening new schools, and increasing work and care options for them. For plans for the middle class, WP aims to both lower the cost of living and reform housing. The former will be done by saying no to the GST hike, making medicine more affordable, equalizing state benefits and housing options for single parents, as well as equalizing childcare subsidies for all women. Whilst the latter will be done by allowing BTO flats for singles at 28 and abolishing the ethnic quota governing citizens' home ownership. Touching on the middle class, SDP's election campaign focuses on helping Singaporeans cope with the COVID-19 crisis by suspending GST until the end of 2021. They also oppose the increase of GST to 9% and their policy stance has always been focused on affordable living with proposals such as cutting ministerial pay to fund assistance schemes for the poor and removing the land cost component of HDB to lower its cost. And we have PSP's proposal for the middle class, which narrows down to housing and taxes and fees. For housing, PSP plans on redeveloping old flats, have new flat prices for income levels, and bring down the housing costs for young Singaporeans. As for taxes and fees, any increase will be frozen within the next five years, whilst exempting basic necessities from GST. And lastly, we look at the support for the elderly. The PAP intends for your people to retire comfortably by offering financial support through various packages, funds and schemes. They intend to provide a network of support such as community network for seniors and also free entry to public gyms and pools. When it comes to supporting the elderly, WP has lined up several social policy proposals. They include a proposal to lower CPF payout eligibility to 60 years old, widening the use of Medisave for those over 60, a proposal to relax the rules on the transfer of CPF funds, along with many more schemes. To support the elderly, the SDP has proposed to provide the bottom 80% of retirees over 65 with a monthly income of $500 under the SDP Retirement Income scheme for the elderly. 
Last but definitely not least, PSP's plans to aid the elderly include CPF withdrawal, enabling your people to withdraw from up to $50,000 at the age of 55, as well as to have MediShield Life Premium to be paid by the government. Now before deciding who we should hire, I'm sure you have lots of things to think through and consider, so revise their resumes, sleep on it, and on July 10th, the decision lies with you, so vote wisely. Since nobody asks me, so I'll answer, I'll ask this myself this question. How is it like living life so dangerously since schooling off day is in like, what, five minutes? Or, I don't know. Well, I think it's fun serving you guys for the past, um, sorry, seven, eight days? Uh, eight, eight days? Yeah. So, it's fun lah. So, I think there are some comments asking whether there'll be a show again. Uh, there'll be... There'll be a polling day show, lo. you know, like I said. So polling day, please, please, please uh, wait for us uh, at around, I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Yeah, we will, we will talk more lah when we have the info, lah, okay? We will blast it out on uh, our social media channels. So on behalf of everybody, the entire crew, and entire Singapore, so I urge you to sleep early. Drink more water and vote wisely, yeah. Cooling off the hey, cut the cut the stream, eh? Cut the stream. <laughs>